thank you very much for your such uh, uh, introduction. That the Manabe Media Artist Programmer, Humans and Machinery PCs. I am interested in the relationship of the two and developed artists. I resort to all kinds of technology, AI, video, lighting, and music as well. I use all kinds of means. What you're seeing is a live show or art installation. And I have been commissioned to work on some of the advertisements. So I also get engaged in fashion shows. This photograph, uh, uh, we started with a team of three 10 years ago. Now we have a team of 40 in our organization, engineers, designers, musicians, uh, video artists, name it. They come from different genres or disciplines. So what I would like to do is to introduce some projects. They are not of my sole work, but it, ha it is a product of collaboration with many of the members. But before I start my personal background, my parents were musicians. My father was a bassist, mother, pianist, keyboard player. This is when I first played the piano, if you call it playing the piano, anyway. Uh, when from the infancy, I was surrounded uh, with music. Uh, first year in the primary, those were the days I started to play with keyboards. But at the same time, I met with games, or the Atari game. And since then, I have been a freak of video games. Uh, eight years old, ten years old, uh, already. Uh, Using PCs, uh, I develop games, and using synthesizers, I compose music, interactive video and music. This is uh, when I first encountered and actually created uh, those. Uh. Now, time passes. This is my high school. Uh, I was a professional DJ uh, for a certain period of time. This DJ experience, you think, would be irrelevant, but that is not the case. This experience mattered a lot as we advanced my career. And then I became a musician. I was quite serious, but unfortunately, I did not have the talent to earn a living as a musician. So I had to change my path. I studied math at the university. So I did all the research, geometry, uh, topology geometry was my area of major. So I learned math here. And also, I used to write uh, programs using my PCs. And gradually, I started uh, with graphic development. Xenakis is a musician. I came to encounter him when I was at college. I was very much influenced. Stochastic uh, was put into the the music, so he inspired me a lot, a lot. So I tried to do the same. But I just became an employee of a company. I be so I worked for a company, and then left and joined the media art company, trying to bring together mass, geometry, music, video, and others. This is a great one uh, project that I did uh, when I was at the Art Media, uh, creating music from 3D. That was a task given at school. I graduated from school and I was 23, 24. I created an environment where I could uh, handle video or image seamlessly, and that was a start of my career. So when I was 25, I started the media work production. What I got interested in for the first time was uh, the uh, uh, relationship between the body and the computer. Uh, the, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, well, uh, I was greatly affected by uh, this uh, work and uh, linking the uh, body and computer directly and how to create work was the issue that they worked on. And uh, this is the uh, signal coming from the muscles that are turned into video and the sound, this uh, was my first attempt. 
at it. On both arms, uh, uh, my or uh, the uh, uh, metric uh, sensors were attached, and uh, the uh, dance was turned into music. The uh, interactivity was quite new to me back then, and so the uh, human uh, movement was uh, changed into sound as well as uh, uh, the uh, uh, image, and uh, this is the reverse. Uh, the uh, signals are sent from the computer and uh, changed my uh, facial expression. So the, uh, when you think about the relationship between machine and uh, uh, the uh, human, uh, what would happen if I reverse the flow? So. This uh, project was uh, still very experimental. Uh, I wonder if you can call it uh, a work or experiment. It was quite vague, but this is one of the things that I did. And uh, so the uh, muscles, now, uh, you, this is a, uh, well, I tried to copy my expression to the uh, uh, face of uh, the two uh, friends who were next to me. So the uh, friends were receiving the electronic uh, stimulus, and so you can see there's a synchronicity uh, between my face and their faces. And so by copying my expression, the emotion can perhaps uh, be copied. That uh, is uh, an issue that uh, I was uh, uh, having in mind as I tried to create work. And furthermore, this is a human body uh, turned into a, a musical instrument. The uh, fingers uh, have uh, sensors attached to them, and uh, so you touch uh, some uh, part of the body and then that creates sound. And so this uh, uh, body is an interface and also a musical instrument. So in the initial period, my work was like uh, uh, the uh, distance uh, with the body was quite close uh, in these experiments and works. And from now, uh, well, my interest uh, turned into the relationship between human and uh, physical uh, machine, like a robot the coexistence between them. Uh, how can we, uh, cr how can I create a work with a machine? Uh, this was like a, a DJ-like machine, a drum machine was a hit or a scratching was done. And uh, in the initial period, this is what they did to control uh, the uh, robots and in what precision they would the uh, robot move. Uh, that's what I studied and from there I created uh, uh, this work, uh, dancers and the uh, robots. Uh, in it, and uh, from now the uh, video is uh, properly recorded. The robot arm is uh, well. The uh, industrial robot is uh, just does a very simple work, and in it, that in itself looks like a dance. But the uh, how, what would happen if I incorporate this into a dance? And so that is uh, work that I created. And here the robot movement. Uh, was created by a choreographer. And so uh, what sort of an interesting dance could I create? That's what I worked on. And after that, well, this again is like a robot, but uh, I used the drones uh, to create a dance. So uh, the uh, how to control drone, uh, I created a system uh, to do just that. And there are 24 drones that are flying in a room. And uh, so you can actually uh, f uh, fly 24 drones uh, with the precision of this equipment. And so I created a system to fly the drones. And uh, what uh, I could uh, do with this uh, was uh, considered. Uh, there was no involvement to humans. Uh, the uh, drones are flying. And uh, I invited a choreographer. Uh, if you were to dance with a drone, what can you do? That's uh, what we examined. And uh, she, for the first time, uh, went into a drone. And again, it was very windy and all the sound was enormous. And because of this, uh, well, uh, she learned uh, the atmosphere and the choreographer, a chore chore a choreography of uh, drones were created by her. Dancing near drones is enormously dangerous, but the sizes of the uh, drones are very uh, 
uh, small and uh, they are light and so you wouldn't get uh, seriously injured if you hit any of them. I was involved in software Ishibashi was uh, someone who uh, was responsible for hardware and uh, the uh, design. And it, it's very interesting to dance with uh, uh, drones. In uh, image, uh, you see it's a 2D, but uh, drones can fly 3D fashion. So when you create this kind of a shape, the uh, drones would go there. And uh, so there's a, a lot of possibility. This is uh, the uh, first uh, work in this field. I think uh, I see a lot of potential here. And uh, we have a different uh, interest, uh, AR. Now, VR is uh, mainstream, but uh, what, what we worked on was mainly AR. And uh, through you can only see this through the uh, video. But uh, the uh, dance uh, added with uh, graphics. And this one, uh, it's not a hologram, uh, a thin film who is placed uh, in front of uh, humans. And uh, you uh, put a picture. And so it uh, looks like uh, as if it was a combination of uh, uh, people with uh, pictures. This is a very old trick that was used. And this is a five-year-old work. AR usually uh, composes uh, graphics. But combining with a 3D scan, the world of AI and VR and computer graphics uh, can be connected seamlessly. Uh, going back and forth. Uh, that's the system that I have created. This is VR, uh, CZ, and from CZ you can go seamlessly to the real world as well. I created the prototype. Uh, South by Southwest is an event in the United States. I use this in a real event. The cameras are fixed, static, uh, but uh, using that system, the camera can look into all kinds of directions. So, reality and the virtual world, the boundary is now being blurred. So you get a lot of interesting images and videos. Uh, I work on the head mount display. I put on a camera. Uh, we put on a camera so that you can see the real world and also the virtual world. So it's a device. And I had a person actually wear and try this. And uh, this is the dance creation that I worked on. You're on the wheelchair uh, to experience this. The views remain seated. And then you would use the head mount with camera and display but uh, as we go along, they are not quite sure whether they are, it's a real world thing or the virtual world. Mm -hmm. uh, that difference or distinction is now being blurred. But sometimes you feel that it's a real world because the dancers come to you in touch and you can feel him or you can smell his uh, uh, fragrance or whatever. But unless otherwise, you really don't know whether it's a real world or the virtual world. I believe that rather than looking at the real world using AR, but rather maybe we will see a situation where every, all the time you are in the state of AR and think about the reality. I hope that uh, my works would give aspiration, inspirations for the others. If you remember, in the closing of the Rio Olympic game, Tokyo City gave a presentation because of license arrangements, we cannot show you the actual video. But what we did is we deployed the AR technology and we introduced 33 different sports games uh, descending from top. Maybe uh, you could check the YouTube when you can. It's quite interesting. Uh, Prime Minister Abe uh, came as a Mario. And what we did is after his appearance. So our uh, production can be deployed in big events. You cannot see with your own eyes, but I'm sure before too soon, you could enjoy those with your real eyes. So whether it's a head mount or through images, what we are taking on as a new challenge is uh, to use actual space and create a hologram type using 3D 
it may take a little world, but you know, you see this light dancer. We use smoke and many projectors uh, to realize what you're seeing on the left. It's very difficult to really appreciate this, but on the stage, uh, you see as though a light dancer is actually dancing on the stage. And we have to have a smoke today, but in the future, AR, it was just an AR and uh, images uh, in the past. But again, before too soon, it will come a day when you dance with holograms. And I would like to think beyond that. Uh, and on a different note, AI and humans and data, the relationship between the two is another area of my interest. This is four years ago. TSC, the Tokyo Stock Exchange, the high frequency trading uh, was something that I got interested in. Uh, so I tried to visualize what the algorithm is doing for high frequency uh, trading. TSE didn't really like this because of restrictions. I had it ready, but we could not use it. So I had to use the virtual world. So I wanted to depict humans fighting together with machines and how the humans behave. And I hoped that I could create something that people can look at instinctively. Now, this is last year. It's Bitcoin. I use Bitcoin. Bot. Uh, that's the automatic trading. And that trading is visualized. In case of Bitcoin, they are very, at least last year, uh, they did not have too many restrictions. So we could actually use it, trade it, and uh, visualize the dot behavior or development. So again, you know, a lot of discussion is going on about the AI as it relates to human behavior. I don't want to just argue or discuss, but I would like to develop software so that I'll be given the opportunity to think about this even further in greater depth. This is the most recent project uh, next week. I will be in Manchester next week in the United Kingdom. And with the astronomist, uh, I will be collaborating this observatory using the data they are uh, uh, catching. They want me to work on the data that they are capturing. I haven't gone far yet, but once uh, what they are capturing can be transferred into digital data and could be used in uh, designs, then again, I think I'll be able to demonstrate my strengths. So I'm seeing, uh, beginning tomorrow, I will think very seriously of what I might be able to do in this area as well. So I had to rush uh, to show you various projects about lifeomatics and the uh, activities that I'm involved in. Now, uh, the uh, critics, uh, they uh, sort out uh, the reality and they try to uh, uh, have an outlook for the future. They are involved in language-related activities, but uh, my work is accompanied by the uh, body work, the uh, body uh, movement, uh, and uh, to create uh, a new environment is one of my missions, I believe. So uh, through these uh, new technologies or the future of the uh, humanity, if uh, uh, the uh, audience uh, can have an imagination around this, uh, if that can happen, I, I think uh, I would be very happy. Now, the engineers and researchers, uh, when they use technology, they try to solve problems. That's uh, their mission. But uh, in our case, we uh, create works, and through the works, uh, the uh, challenges or the issues uh, uh, that you may encounter when you use technology uh, may be uh, considered. And also, art is a very open activity, and so uh, w w through this, uh, we have many opportunities to be linked with a machine and equipment. So uh, if uh, this uh, opens up a new uh, path uh, for the future, it would be wonderful. So uh, that's my presentation. Thank you.